you must have a face covering the entire time that you are in the sanctuary unless you are one of the speakers. That as the benediction is said, you need to immediately exit this sanctuary. You cannot congregate in the owls. If you choose to congregate, in, uh, congregate after service, you will have to do so outside. We're looking forward to seeing you 2021 at 10.45 a.m. here at Mount Zion Baptist Church, located at 10180 Woodlawn Boulevard. May God bless you.
you must have a face covering the entire time that you are in the sanctuary unless you are one of the speakers. That as the benediction is said, you need to immediately exit this sanctuary. You cannot congregate the owls. If you choose to congregate, in, uh, congregate after service, you will have to do so outside. We're looking forward to seeing you 2021 at 1045 a.m. here at Mount Zion Baptist Church located at 10180 Woodlawn Boulevard. May God bless you. Good morning, Mount Zion. Good morning to all our worshipers on YouTube, Facebook, or the internet areas. We thank you, Lord, for joining with us this morning as we begin our uh, devotional service. We will begin with our scripture from the book of Matthew and chapter 2. And those scriptures read as follows. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, of Judea in the days of Herod the king. Behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently, what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them until it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented to him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. That's the word of God for the people of God. Amen. You can uh, join us now if you wish. Uh, we're going to be singing hymn number 188. Yield not to temptation. Amen. Amen. Yield not to temptation. For yielding is sin, each victory will help you, some other to win, fight manfully. 
onward, dark passion subdued. Look ever to Jesus, he will carry you through. Ask the Savior to help you, comfort, strengthen, and keep you. Willing to aid you, he will carry you through. Shun evil companions, bad language, disdain. God's name hold in reverence, nor take it in. to help you comfort strengthen and keep you he is willing to aid you he will carry you through i like this one to him that overcometh god giveth a crown the Savior to help you. Comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He is willing to aid you. He will carry you through. We're going to ask the Savior to help us right now as we go to God in prayer. Let us all pray. Father in heaven, we're gathered here on this uh, last Sunday, as it were, of 2021. And we're grateful, Father, that you've permitted us to see this day. Oh, Lord, you've guided us safely through this year. You've kept us. You've provided for us. Oh, Lord, you've seen to it that all of our needs have been met. And all we can say right now is thank you. Thank you for keeping us as you've done, Lord. We're just grateful, Father, uh, when this year started. Now, we weren't meeting in the church, Lord. We weren't meeting in this building. But you've seen to it, Lord, that by your grace we're able to gather together again. And for this, we say thank you. Oh, Father, at the beginning of this year, Lord, we didn't have vaccines, Lord. But thank you, Lord, you've provided. And Lord, we've got the shots, we've got the boosters, we've got it all, and it was all free. And for that, we say thank you. Oh, Father, we're just so, so appreciative of everything you do for us. We ask you now to bless this service today. Oh, Lord, we pray that you bless our preacher, Lord, uh, Reverend Bailey. He's on his way to a new assignment, oh, Father. He's stepping out on faith, Lord, going into a situation he's never been in before. Grant him your special favor, Lord, as he takes on this assignment, this awesome responsibility of pastoring a church 
in times like these. Oh, Lord, there are so many who have fallen by the wayside. There are so many, Lord, who have just walked away. Oh, Father, we just ask you to keep him, strengthen him, bear him up, Lord, on every side, oh, Father. And we're just thankful for our pastor here, Lord, Pastor Stone. You've, you've helped her through, Lord, all of this. She's kept our congregation together. She's preached the word, oh, Father. She's been faithful in season, out of season. And for that, we say thank you. Reward her greatly, Father, for the dedication she has given to the ministry of Mount Zion Baptist Church. And, Lord, we just want to just say, I, I, I just can't say thank you enough, Lord. If I had a thousand tongues... 10,000 tongues. I couldn't express all of the wonderful things that you've done for your people. And for this nation, oh Lord, uh, we're praying for healing for our nation. We're a divided nation, Father. That's just the honest truth, Father. We're praying that you will bring us together, Lord. We're giving thanks right now. In the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Come on, clap your hands if you love Jesus. Come on, Mount Zion, clap your hands if you love Jesus. Come on, this is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Do I have anybody in the sanctuary that's going to join me to lift up the name of Jesus? I'm not going to beg you, but I want you to come on and let's magnify the name of the Lord together. David said, oh! together. You on Facebook and you on YouTube, wherever you are, be found giving God the glory. Now Mount Zion, let's do it together. Anybody know him as a great God? He's a mighty God. Strong God. Ah, glory. How great is our God? Huh? I think you know this one. Sing it good, Mount Zion. How great, how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. All will see how great, how great is our God. Sing it good, Mount Zion. Everybody say how great is our God. Oh, it's our God. All will see it. How great is our God. Everybody little raise it up, raise it up. Raise it up to the Lord. Say how great. Lord, you've been so good to us. I want to declare everybody You've been so good All will see yeah. How great Is our God Let's move on You're the name above all names Name above all names Sing it church And you're so worthy of our prayer sing, yeah, my heart will sing, how great is our God, come on, let's raise it up to the Lord, you're the name above all names, you're the name above, there's no one greater, and you're worthy of all praise, my heart will sing, how great church name above and you're so worthy of all praise I love it and my heart will sing my heart will sing 
Hallelujah. How great is he is. Yeah. Sing it. How great, how great is our God. Woo. Come on and declare it. Sing with me how great. Come on, Facebook. Come on, YouTube. Come on, conference call. Sing to your great God. How great he is. had a witness. Yeah, all will see how great is our God. One more time for the Holy Ghost. Everybody sing it loud, say it loud, say it clear. How great is our God. Sing with me. It's our God. All will see it. Yeah. Everybody say how great, how great is our God. God. Sing it, church. Oh, see. Come on, let's make one big choir. Is our God. I oh, will see, yes. How great. Woo, God, I glorify you. Is our God. Come on, let's raise it up. One more. your name on high all will see yes how great how great is our God come on my fire and celebrate hallelujah hallelujah How great is our God. You know how great he is. Woke us up this morning. Well, That's how great. How great is he? Started us on our way. How great is he? Put running in our feet. How great is he? Put clapping in our hands. How great is he? He let new grace and mercies that we saw this morning and for that we are truly grateful this is the day that the Lord has made and we rejoice in it of it and through it for we know it is by his grace and his mercy that yet we have another shot at this thing called life on this side of the world spirit of the living God fall fresh right now saturate this place Holy Spirit, we thank you for allowing us to tabernacle with you for a little while in this day. Lord, fill us up. If it be thy will, let our cups overflow so that we can be a beacon of life. That someone else can, 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 can get a drink of this well that never runs dry from our very own plate and our sins. Be with us in this service. Touch the instruments. Touch the pews. Touch the greeters. Touch the saints, touch the pulpit, touch us all right now. That we shall worship the name of the living God. But while Christmas was yesterday, we celebrate Christ anew every day. Lord, let the melodies of heaven rain down in this place right now. Lord God, there's someone in here right now. Knock the burdens off their shoulders. There's someone right now. Help calm the anxiety and they fear. Someone right now in the midst of the service is looking for a miracle. Let them know that miracles, signs, and wonders still are performed with great power and great love and kindness. Now be in this service. In the name of Jesus we pray.
Reverend Dr. Albert Bailey Jr. That's me. <laughs> Last Sunday with us before he moves to Hartford, Connecticut. What a blessing, what a journey has been here in Ohio. I'll speak a little bit more about that later. But it's fascinating, Reverend Stone, that God would use you to allow me to preach the last Sunday of the year here at Mount Zion, the Mountain Valley. Amen. And next week, the first Sunday, I begin a journey at Shiloh, a place of peace. So it's fitting, beloved, that we are gathered here today to worship Christ anew, still in the holiday spirit for the believer. We celebrate the holiday every day. Why? Because we know for those who are Christian, that our Redeemer yet lives. And that's good news. We are reminded that there will be no Bible studies or prayer this week. The Wednesday and Saturday Bible studies will resume on Wednesday, January 5th, 2022. The prayer calls will resume on Monday, January 3rd. On Friday, December 31st, we will close out the year of our watch night service. This will be a virtual service that will begin at 6.30 p.m. You have already received the link. If you did not receive the link or check, check your emails or whatever form of communication uh, that you received from the church. Please remember to pray for the city of Shelley's as well as those families that are moved to the valley of the shadow of death.
Yeah. 
anybody glad the Lord loves him in spite of my own faults and failures? Oh, you love me so. Say it, church. Why you love me so, Lord, I share. never know why you love me so Lord I shall never know the precious land of God said oh 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 oh
canzoni con lui. to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that had been seen when it rose went before them until came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy, and going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh, and being born in a dream, not to return to him, they departed to their own country by another way. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his holy word. You may be seated. For a few moments this morning, we want to lift up the joy of the journey. Joy of the journey in the message version, you will find these words. Instructed by the king, they set off. Then the star appeared again, the same star they had seen in the eastern skies. It led them on into, it hovered over the place of the child. They could hardly contain themselves. They were in the right place. Somebody say the right place. They had arrived at the right time. They entered the house and they saw the child in the arms of Mary, his mother. Overcome, they kneeled and they worshipped him. Then they opened their luggage and presented gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. In a dream, they were warned not to report back to Herod. So they worked out another road. Left the territory without being seen and return to their own countries. The joy of the journey. Beloved, make no mistakes about it. Life is not a game. Life is not something that we start in the fall. Life is not something that we can take a time out. It's not something that you can start on Monday, put down on Tuesday, and pick it back up and continue. Life happens. It happens daily. Through the constant grits and the rigor and the roll, Life is happening. This journey here at Mount Zion started for me as a seminary student at Payne Theological Seminary. You guys don't mind me taking my time a little bit this morning. I was on my way to class and I saw a post. And I just want to tell you how people come along for your journey directly and indirectly. And how important it is to pay homage to those along the way. And as a seminary student at Payne, I saw a post for a youth and young adult minister position at Mount Zion Baptist Church, Woodland. I went to class that night. It was conflict management, taught by Dr. Wilton Blake, who's in the building. And I went to class, and I asked Dr. Blake, I said, Dr. Blake, I saw this post about Mount Zion Church in Cincinnati. You in Cincinnati? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good church, great people. I got some Masonic brothers in that church. You will do well. You apply. I will make sure I, I talk to Pastor Swan. That week I applied. The next week I went back to class, and the first thing he said was, I had a conversation with your pastor. We was at an event at the same place at the same time. 
and I brought up your name. And I'll never, I will never forget that. Friday night conversation in December, in the winter, uh, received a phone call about coming to Mount Zion for an interview. Amen. A few weeks later, on a, on a cold uh, night, on a Friday, in the conference room, Deacon Moore was there. Amen. Then trustee, uh, Chair Trustee Arlene Smith, uh, Sister Gwen Wharton, uh, uh, Deacon Wayne Lane uh, was in the room, and we had a conversation about ministry. Amen. It took place, and then came to Mount Zion, raised some, some children, had two more children in the process. Amen. You saw my babies grow. Amen. All, uh, uh, Sister Payne takes them out to the movies and to dinner. Amen. Reverend Stone has had a lead over. Everybody has come along for the journey. The work of the favors. Amen. The work of the Smith. Amen. The work of Sister Jubilee who was constantly uh, there. Everybody. I can't say everybody's name, but everybody has been a part of this journey. The joy of the journey in our societies today, what we are seeing is irrelevant times for people who should be relevant. We as the church have to do a better job of being connectional, being directly involved with the journey. Everybody's journey doesn't have joy, right? We equate happiness and being joy and happiness is not the byproduct of joy. Joy is me knowing that despite COVID and the conditions, I can still praise and worship God in the land of the living. Joy is knowing I don't have to wait to come out of the situation. I can dance because I know who will bring me out. And I know if I never come out of the storm, I know who holds my hand in the middle of going through it. The joy of the journey. If I would have never met Dr. Blake at a student at a HBCU, I would have never came to Mount Zion. If I would have never came to Mount Zion, I would have never met Maxwell Davis. I would have never met Brother Blackwell. I would have never met Lawrence Coleman, who signed the petition for me to become a Mason. You have to tell the story. If it was not for Mount Zion, I would not have met Renee Hargrove, who got me back into working in education. If it was not for Renee Hargrove getting me back in education, I would have never had the wonderful opportunities at the Paul Crystal Ray. If I would have never met the people at the Paul Crystal Ray, I would have never had the inclination as a black man in society and education to go higher and receive a doctoral degree. If I would have never went to United Theological Seminary, Reverend Stone, I would have never met Dr. Rosell Harris, who admitted a student who should have waited a few extra years, but got me in. If I would have never went to United Theological Seminary, I would have never met Dr. Cummins. I would have never met Dr. Walker, who has done so much for me. If I would have never met Dr. Walker, if I would have never met Dr. Cummins, if I would have never went to United, I wouldn't have heard about Shiloh Baptist. If I would have never heard about Dr. Walker and Dr. Cummins, what would it be? Being a part of Mount Zion has its privileges. When people say being part of a church, what's the benefits of it? That's a good question. And our testimony should show the reason why. Amen? If I would have never been a part of raising and stealing young people's minds. Deacon Haygood would have never answered the phone when the people from Shiloh called and said, we need a reference. Who else can give a reference than someone who has worked with his daughter? If I would have never met Dr. Blake, they would have never called him twice. I don't know if he gave him, he must have gave him good news both times, right? It's not very rare that somebody does a reference check to the same person twice. But everybody comes alone for the journey. 
We would have never been part of Mount Zion. Then one Friday night in a sold-out stadium, we wouldn't have saw Albert at Princeton and Josh at Lakota West. And Josh, right now, we speak prosperity to you right now. That whatever college that you desire, that God sends that scholarship right now to you, young men. We speak truth. We speak anointing. We speak double portion to you right now that wherever your heart so desires, that that coach, that email, that letter will show up for you in abundance, young man. It's all a part of the journey. Joy is the experience of deliverance and the anticipation of salvation. Provided the most significant occasions for rejoicing among the people of God in the Old Testament. The coming of the Messiah who delivers his people and brings salvation because the basis for rejoicing in the New Testament. The response of joy, gladness, and happiness is not only a deep inward feeling, get this, but it's expressed when celebration, when God's people gather together. Happiness does not bring joy, and joy isn't the byproduct of happiness. Joy is the fruit of the Spirit. And when we find joy, it is infused with comfort and wrapped in peace. It is an attitude of heart and spirit, often synonymous with, but not limited to following Christ Jesus and pursuing a Christian life. The idea of joy is most commonly expressed in the Old Testament by the word of Sama and in the New Testament by Charo, among the other 12 Hebrew root words used for some aspect of joy. Some think that, 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 that joy comes through happiness. Get this, brothers and sisters. Joy is a fruit of the Spirit. Because when you are connected to fruit of the spirit and you are in line with God, then you as a Christian, as a believer, you have to understand that this joy I have, the world didn't give it to me. And since the world didn't give it to me, I shall not render and be at the aid of society and the world when I know who gave it to me. A few points this morning as we close out the year. I want to be a blessing to somebody about the joy of the journey that no matter where you are at in your personal life, no matter where you are at in your personal walk, to make sure that you understand the joy of your journey. After listening to the king, they went on their way. Notice the harmony of their joy. They worship together. Oh, when the saints worship together. Point number one, finding the joy. Finding the joy. There was a common perception in their joyfulness together. They found the star together. They, they, they heard about going to visit together. They stopped at the king together. They proceeded on their journey together. Finding the joy. What brings you joy? Right now, to those out in social media land, in the virtual Mount Zion, type in that box, what brings you joy? Joy, for some, comes at the expense of others. I get joy seeing my family happy. I get joy seeing unity. I get joy seeing the church as in the book of Acts, the second chapter, around the 40-something verse, when it says they gathered and they was all on one accord. That's what brings me joy. Working in education and talking to young people, and we were asked this question, Reverend Stone, what is it that brings you joy? And the first thing a lot of times Brother Coleman, young people would do is shrug their shoulders and say, I don't know. And sometimes they, I don't know, is not an ignorant response, Sister Jubilee. It's because our babies have not seen those who are raising them. 
exhibit what joy is. See, folks really think that you got to have everything you need and want in order to be happy, and then they will label this, this temporary state of happiness as joy. That's fabricated. We have to experience and know from the believer perspective that we get joy in relationship with God and at the aid and assist of the brother and the sisterhood of the church. That's joy. Joy is, is, is knowing that on Monday, I'm not upset that I had a bad day. Joy is knowing that in spite of the conditions not being favorable, I still thank God I have a job. I still have life. I still was able to turn on the light switch. I was still able to travel over the highways and byways of life. Finding the joy. I don't know what their relationship was before they got to Jesus. But we know that once they got to Jesus, it was everything they expected to be and then some. How do we help people to find the joy? We as the church got to be everything that we have been called and commissioned to be and then some. And that then some for us is grace. Because whatever that we lack, through grace, he has already acknowledged. He is our strong tower. He is our heavy load share. He is the wheel in the middle of the wheel. He is our portion. I came to Jesus. And in October of 1988, I found my joy in the Morning Star Missionary Baptist Church. And a few Sundays after that, I went down in the water. Do you remember when you found your joy? Do you remember when you got your part of your religion this morning? Finding the joy. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. Joy is a fruit of the spirit. The Bible does not talk about the spiritual relationship that, 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 that the, the magi, the wise man had with God. But they use the word joy as a description word. What does that mean? No matter where you are at on your journey, you can still experience the newness of God. You can still experience joy. The wise man traveled to meet Jesus. To hear was the prophecy true? Was the prophecy going to be fulfilled? One of the reasons why we can't find joy in the lives of church, community, family, and resources because we're traveling for the wrong thing. We're traveling for the wrong people. And if you expect the, the shift of the blessing to start as we close out the year and go into the new, that we have to make sure that the route that we are traveling is grounded and aided and rest and ruled and owned and occupied by Jesus Christ. You can't go finding joy in the midst of some pathetic and pitiful people. I know that's bold words to say, but watch this. Once you have your joy, you can walk into those situations and speak a word to those people, leave the word, and walk right back out. Sometimes, we who are called and commissioned and we know that we are on the battlefield for the Lord, we spend too many times working in some fields and some battles that we know that we just need to leave the word and go to the next destination. Don't always sit and park in some parking lots that you know is some unfertile ground. Don't sit there and let some unsaturated, unanointed people bring you down. Take your testimony, preach the word, teach the word, speak good news, work for a hot second, and then you hit the road. Because life is too short, and we are all called, commissioned to be on the highways and the byways of life to help find those who are lost. 
not to sit there and debate with people who just want to hear themselves talk. Going in 2022, we as the church, we have a marvelous opportunity for service. But we can't stay in the mud with folk who want to continue to just keep us in their own muddy waters. In order of discovering and finding the joy, you got to be careful of the streets out here that you navigating in, in your own personal walk. Yes, there will be some good days. Yes, there will be some hills to climb. But make sure that Jesus is behind the wheel. Because the potholes you hit with him driving, he can navigate you through. Finding this, this, this joy, a lot of times we equate that happiness with joy. And that's not the case. What is that's driving you? When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. What brings you great joy? What is it that is motivating you? We know that these wise men went on a journey to seek after the sign that showed them to the way to where the Messiah would be as the church, as the people of God. Do we still seek him? Are we showing up out of tradition? Are we showing up out of personality? Are we showing up to say, God, here I am to continue to sacrifice and render unto you worship for all that you have done, all that you are doing, and all that I know that you will be doing. Finding the joy. I, I don't know for some if, where you may have placed it. I don't know for some where, where, where have you may have hid it. I don't know for some if your joy is just hiding, but we need for you to rekindle and renew that joy. A lot of times we, we celebrate the birth of Christ and then we rush to the next season, to the next story. For us today, I want you to sit for a little while with this ninth and this twelfth verse. Because this talks about the journey of, of, of the journey of getting there, the journey of once you are there, and the journey of when you leave there. Point number two. Now before we get to number two, is I want you to understand that when you find your joy, you have to understand that your happiness comes at the expense of God's blessings. Your happiness does not come in the byproduct of temporary things that will soon pass away. Your happiness is the byproduct of grace and what God gives you. The favor that he shows you should not only cause you to be in a state of happiness, but that state of happiness moves to exceedingly joy. See, joy is something that we cannot lose, even in our sorrow, even in our grief, even in our despair. We must hold on to this joy. Point number two, protecting the joy. Protecting the joy. After being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. The obedience of the Magi with worship comes action. Let me say that again. You can't worship and not go to work. They go hand in hand. If the worship is proper, the assignment will be given. Why would God lead you to Jesus and send you back to the hands of one who wants to steal and kill joy? This is how it is between us and the Lord as well. If we really love him, if we really worship him, then we will just demonstrate it by doing what pleases him. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. So in a very real way, we don't show how much we really worship by God what we do in church. As much in the way that we obey him when we leave. We come to church, we give our money, we kneel and pray, and we sing as loud as we can. But if we don't leave and don't live the way God wants us to live, and we do do the things he has told us to do, 
we really don't worship him. What does that mean for us today? We all say that we worship God. But what does your obedience say about how you are worshiping? Are you doing what he tells you to do? Is that sin, that is blatant area of disobedience in your life right now? Are you forgiving the people he told you to forgive? Or are you still holding on to those grudges? Are you serving him in the ministry he called you to? Or are you putting that ministry off and keep putting off the work of God? Is there anything God has laid on your heart to do that you are not doing? In order to protect your joy, don't let unworthy people steal your joy. In a dream, the angel said, don't go back to hell. Message version said, they planned and they went another route. Don't let unworthy people steal your joy. Mount Zion, don't let unworthy people steal your joy. Don't let unworthy people block your blessing. Don't let unworthy people hinder your potentiality. Don't let unworthy people uh, distance you from your worship with God. Don't let unworthy people stop you from finding your joy. Don't let unworthy people stop you from protecting your joy. They could not go back the way they came because we know Harold was on a mission to steal and kill joy. Don't allow your joy, your mental health be ruined by unproductive people who are out to not see you live joyful, who don't want to see you being happy, who don't want to see you thriving, who don't want to see you worshiping, who don't want to see the church grow, who don't want to see the church at its best, who don't want to see the church, the ministry, protect your joy at all costs. Why is that important that they did not go back the same way they came? They didn't go back the same way they came because they knew it was a man who was self-centered and selfish. It was a man who, who just wanted information to go out and kill Jesus. The beauty of the gifts that the Magi gave is overlooked at some time. The frankincense, the myrrh, that they gave Reverend Stone. The scripture doesn't talk about it, but I bet it came in handy when the family had to flee to Egypt. Amen. See, the gifts that they gave Jesus helped protect the joy of the world. How are our gifts protecting the banner of the old rugged cross? What is it that you worship, that you lay down to worship and give to Christ anew? I want to park this thing here this morning of, of, of protecting the joy. See, it is in protecting the joy that, that, that God sent us Jesus to begin with. Because we are God's joy. But we are his handiwork. But we are his prized creation. And, and, and through 33 generations, he had to send us a gift to help us find our joy to help us find our way back. I don't know about you this morning, but I'm so glad that he sent Jesus. I'm so glad that he used Mary. I'm so glad that the wise men were wise. I'm so glad that they went another way. I'm so glad that for the lost there is another way. I'm so glad that because he lived, we can face another day. I'm so glad that the joy was born in Bethlehem. And I'm so glad that the joy went to Calvary. I'm so glad that the joy was stretched wide. I'm so glad that he dropped his head and died. I'm so glad that they said, surely he died. And I'm so glad that three days later that he rose with all power in his hand. 
that the joy of our salvation is still at work, that the joy of the Lord is still healing, that the joy of the world is still nurturing, that the joy of the world is still able, that the joy of the world is still providing. Won't he make a way for you? Has it been good to you? In 2021, did he keep you? In 2021, did he bring you? You may not have had everything that you thought you needed, but as long as you had your joy, you had everything. The doors of the church is open this morning. Please stand for those who are here this morning. And you've been looking for joy in all the wrong places. This unspeakable joy. This joy that wise men trample. This joy that wise men fell down to worship. And this joy that wise men found a way to go back to their people. Another way. In 2022, we speak that there's another way for us to live and operate. And that, same, that road that is another way, it brings us right back to Calvary. That there is still room at the cross. There is still room at the mercy seat. That God is still hearing and answering prayer. Come this morning. Joy, joy. God's great joy, 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 down in my soul, sweet, beautiful, so saving joy, oh, joy, joy in my soul. Joy, God's great joy, 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 down in my soul, sweet, beautiful, so saving joy, oh, joy, joy in my soul oh joy joy in my soul oh joy yeah oh joy The master's joy, yeah, yeah, the master's, the man, the master's joy, oh, yeah, the lily of the valley joy, oh, the lily of the valley joy. Oh, 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 joy, joy in my soul. Oh, oh, joy, joy in my soul. Amen. As we get ready to bless the world. render a portion unto the Lord, which is rightfully and truly here. You are give a five app, you can mail to Mount Zion, or you can come and drop it off here at the church. Lord, we ask you to bless the giver, bless the offering, bless those who gave freely, bless those who wanted to give but did not. Lord, we, we speak a word of thanks and thanksgiving and appreciation for this offering, for the use of the advancement of your kingdom and your purpose your works. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Well, Mount Zion, it's time to go. It's time for us to go out here with a smile on our face and letting our brothers and sisters know that we still got our joy. And we take it on this journey. As we get ready to go into this new season, wherever you are at, take and keep your joy with you. I thank you for me and my family from 2009 till now for being our family. We will still be in touch. I will be coming back and forth because my babies will still be here. Amen. So some of you guys, while I'm gone, if you got nothing to do, go check out a game. <laughs> I'll be watching, coming back every now and then. Amen. I love you. I appreciate you for pouring into me. We had a good time. Amen. I really appreciate the love and the kindness of Mount Zion to, to all the family, the Ellisons, uh, for checking on me and everybody. Amen. Let us pray. God, we thank you. We thank you for everything that we have, our eyes have seen, our hearts have felt in this service. We ask you now, Lord, to bless us this, this last leg of the race of this year. Help us to help someone discover their joy. Help us to strengthen our relationships with you. And as we go into this new season, we stand tall knowing that God, what you did for us in 2021, we know is even greater in 2022. Our brothers and sisters, go in peace and know that God loves you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You must have a face covering the entire time that you are in the sanctuary unless you are one of the speakers. That as the benediction is said, you need to immediately exit this sanctuary. You cannot congregate in the owls. If you choose to congregate, in, uh, congregate after service, you will have to do so outside. We're looking forward to seeing you 2021 at 10.45 a.m. here at Mount Zion Baptist Church located at 10180 Woodline Boulevard. May God bless you.